Hi everyone, today is our last lesson, lesson four. Now it's titled a lesson, but it really is more so like a practice um, because nothing new is happening in today's notes. We are incorporating what we talked about last week with what we talked about this week, which is basically you know everything about solving quadratics now. So we are solving quadratics by factoring, solving quadratics by completing the square, and solving quadratics by using the quadratic formula. So let's get started with today's notes. All right, so today we are on our last lesson, lesson four. Again, it's like a practice. There's nothing new to be taught today, just to practice with what we'll have talked about this week and last week. So clicking on those lesson four notes. We are just solving quadratics. So I can solve quadratic functions by factoring, completing the square, or using the quadratic formula. Remember, there are multiple ways to solve quadratic equations. Remember, solving equations, there are multiple ways to solve quadratic equations. Remember, solving quadratic equations is finding where the parabola intersects the x-axis when y equals zero. These solutions are also called zeros, x-intercepts, or roots. There are multiple ways to solve quadratics. Sometimes the directions will tell you how to solve, other times you just have to figure out the best way. So what I mean by that is that the directions might just say solve, or they could say solve by completing the square, solve by using the quadratic formula. So you can, sometimes you have to determine what's gonna be the best method, other times it will tell you how to solve. The quadratic formula will work for all quadratics but the other methods only work in certain situations. The methods for solving quadratics are below. First method that we learned is factoring. So we factor doing GCF, dots, trinomial, slide, divide, slide, and then we make a t-chart and solve for each factor. Second way we learned is completing the square, which is when we solve by doing inverse operations. So we have to, as always with all of these, we have to set the equation equal to zero. And for this one, we're just getting x by itself. Number three, quadratic formula. Plug everything in and calculate. So we are gonna first solve by factoring. So if you need to refer back to last week, I believe it was lesson one. I put in a bunch of reference sheets into the Monday folder. You can refer back to that and that's where the factoring flowchart is and also reminds you how to slide divide slide. All of those details are there. So this first one actually should be easy, but it tends to stump people because we tend to forget about GCF when we're factoring. So um, actually, even before all of this, remember we have to set all the equations equal to zero because it's like saying this is what y equals. Um, so we need to replace that y with a zero. So now we are going to factor the GCF. What do both of these terms have in common? They have an x in common. Now, as I was showing a lot of you guys over Zoom um, last week, that when we take out a GCF, remember we're dividing each piece. So let me just show you exactly what I mean. Okay, we already know we have the equation. I want to edit the equation. Okay, so who, So if we make this into, um, or I'm going to show you that we're dividing out this x. So we're taking the x squared and we're dividing out an x. Same thing with 2x. We are dividing out an x. Okay, so when we do that, we have x squared divided by x, which just gives us 1x plus, and then 2x divided by x is just 2. If you're not sure if that's correct, distribute it backwards and make sure you get the same thing we started with. Okay, after we have that, now I showed you yesterday or um, last week how to make that t-chart. We draw like this. And if you're on paper, this is a little bit easier. On this side, it's just x equals zero because that's our only factor is x and we have to set it equal to zero. So boom, we're done, okay? So I'm just gonna erase this so that I can make it a little clearer on the dock. Okay. 
So we get x equals zero as one solution. And the other solution, we have to set the factor equal to zero first. And then we have to subtract two on both sides. So we get x equals negative two. So my solution, I'm gonna write these as interval notation, are um, they're negative two and zero. Let's just go to our calculator real quick. If I were to type this equation in, we have x squared plus two x. I know that it should intersect at negative two and zero, and that's exactly what my parabola does. Okay, so let's take a look at the next two. So again, we I'm gonna put my y on the other side. I'm gonna say that this is what y is equal to, but then I know I have to replace that y with a zero. So we're solving by factoring. So first step, is there a GCF? There is no GCF for this problem. Second step, can we do dots? Is it a binomial, subtraction, and perfect squares? No, it is not, so we cannot do dots. So we have to try regular trinomial factoring. So to do regular trinomial factoring, we just need a one in front of that x squared, which is what we have, okay, it's invisible. So that means we can find factors of 15 that subtract to two. So first I'm gonna double bubble. I always like to double bubble first. And I also like my zero at the end. I'm gonna space things out a little bit. This multiplier right here, or operation, this negative, tells us that we need different signs because we need to multiply to a negative 15. The only way we can do that is by having a plus and a minus. And factors of 15 that subtract to two are five and three. Now, I, want, I just wanna show you really quick you feel free to type them in first and then check to see if your signs are right. So right here, we've got a positive five and a negative three. Positive five minus three gives us a positive two. That's not correct here. So that means I need to flip-flop these. So either move the five and the three or move your signs. I'm just gonna move my signs, make that a minus and make that a plus. Now we set both equations, x minus five equals zero, equal to zero. So that my first solution will be x equals five, because we add five to both sides. Then we have x plus three equals zero. We solve that, so we should get negative three. You can also just leave your solutions like that. All right, next one, number three. So we have six x squared minus 13 x plus six. First of all, let's make that y equals. I'll put it at the end this time. And instead of doing y equals, I'm gonna just write equals zero, because that's what I'm gonna end up doing anyway. GCF, there isn't one. We cannot take a six out of a 13, so don't get stumped by that. Dots can't do it, it's not a binomial. Regular trinomial factoring we cannot do here because we have a number other than one in front of the x squared. So this problem is a slide divide slide problem. So our first step is to slide that six over to that other six. So that means we would get x squared minus 13x plus 36, because when we slide, we are really multiplying. Then we factor like normal. So we're gonna double bubble. Well, that looks weird right now, but. So factors of 36 that add to 13. First of all, I'm gonna look at this operator here. The positive tells us it's gonna be two of the same signs. And then you look at the first operator to tell you what signs those are gonna be. This is going to be a minus minus. And then factors of 36 that add to 13. So if you're not sure, again, go to y equals, type in 36 divided by x, second graph. Hopefully you realize it is 9 and 4. Remember, we are doing slide, divide, slide. We are not finished. A lot of us want to stop there because we know that like we're just so used to t-charting after this point, but you have to remember to simplify. So now we have to, we did the slide, now we have to do the divide. So we have to divide each side. Now I'm just gonna put a backslash because my equation editor I didn't do for my previous line. So I need to divide every single numerical piece by the number I originally multiplied by, which was six. So I have to divide nine by six and I have to divide four by six. When I do that, I have to see if, it, if they can simplify. So 
we still have x minus. Now type in 9 divided by 6 in your calculator and press math, enter, enter. You might also be able to do that in your head. Math, enter, enter. So we got 3 over 2. But basically, if you do it in your calculator, it's a foolproof method because you can't get it wrong. And then on the other side, we have x minus, and then 4 divided by 6, math, enter, enter. You have to simplify the fractions. We get 2 thirds. So we did the slide, we did the divide, now we do the slide again. You have to slide the bottom numer or excuse me, the denominator up to the with the x. So this is going to become 2x minus 3 and then 3x minus 2 equals 0 because we're still solving it. So we have to do 2x minus 3 equals 0 and we need to solve here. So that means I'm going to actually do this one because this has some more pieces. We have to add 3 to both sides. So we get 2x equals 3. We are not done. You have to divide both sides by 2. So we get x equals 3 over 2 or 1.5. Then we have the other piece, 3x minus 2. You add 2 to both sides and then divide by 3. So we get x equals 2 thirds or 2 over 3. That one you should leave as a fraction. It doesn't say to round because the decimal would be 0 0.66666, so on and so forth. So those are our two solutions for that one. You can list them in interval notation if you'd like. All right, let's take a look at the next few. So we've got solving by completing the square. So when we complete the square, you want to get it into that form where we have um, parentheses, to the second power plus or minus some number okay if you remember that's called vertex form so there is a hint here it says complete the square first then set it equal to zero and solve for x okay so if you remember when we complete the square we first need to take our b value our b value here is 12. we have to take half of that and that gives us six and then we have to square that so then we have to do 6 squared, which gives us 36. Now, I'm going to copy and paste. We have to add that 36 between the B and the C values. So I'm going to add, let's actually bring this back. Okay, so I'm going to add it right in between the B and the C values. So if we add 36 to the equation, we also have to subtract 36. Okay, so these are my two new pieces. I'll actually change the color so we can clearly see that those are, that's how we are um, manipulating the equation here. We added 36 and we subtracted 36. Okay, this is being annoying. Forget the colors. So now what we're going to do is we are going to group the first three expressions together. I'm sorry, the first three terms together. This Chromebook's throwing me off here. And we are going to factor the stuff in parentheses. So double bubble. So factors of 36 that add to 12. By the way, these factors should always be identical because that's the whole point of doing this is we want a perfect square trinomial so that we can have it in vertex form. And then we have negative 36 minus 13. We would get minus 49. And then one last step to get it into vertex form. We are so close. We just have to write that x plus 6 as a square because that's going to be easier to solve. Okay, so we completed the square. Now we want to solve it. So I'm going to set it equal to zero. My next step is going to be to add 49 to both sides. So that means we get x plus 6 squared. Equals 49. Okay, now if you remember, we have to, to get rid of the squared, 
we had to take the square root of both sides. I'm just going to highlight the whole thing. Oh, it's not going to let me. I'm going to highlight the whole thing here, and I'm going to insert that square root symbol. So we can see that this um, x plus 6 squared, if you take the square root of that, all that does is it gets rid of the squared. So we get, are just left with x plus 6 equals the square root of 49. Now, if we take the square root of 49, remember there's always two answers. There's a hidden answer. Because when we take the square root, we're trying to find what number times itself gives us that number under the square root. Now, the square root of 49 is 7. But if you think about it, if we have a negative 7 times a negative 7, that also gives us 49. So we have to include that negative in our answer as well. So what that's going to look like is we're going to have x plus 6 equals positive or negative 7. So plus or minus 7. Okay, let's keep solving. Getting that x by itself, subtract 6, subtract 6, we get x equals, we'll do this as an equation, x equals plus or minus 7, minus 6. So let's just figure this out right now. So we get a positive 7 minus 6, that gives us 1. If we have a negative 7 minus 6, that gives us negative 13. Okay, again, if we go to our calculator, I want to show you both of these equations. So the first equation we had was x squared plus 12x minus 13. Okay, now I'm actually also going to type in my completed the square version of the equation. x plus 6 squared minus 49. Okay, now on this calculator, do you see how there's colors on the left-hand side? So it's automatically going to show two different colors for my graphs. But if you think about it, remember, these equations should be identical. They're just different ways of writing it. But either way, I'm going to scroll over to the left here, and I'm going to click Enter on those lines and the colors. If you're using your calculator from school, you won't have the color option. And if you just press Enter, you can toggle between the type of line you see. So I'm actually going to use this circle um, the circle line so that we can clearly see that these lines are going to be identical. So then I'm going to press graph. Now the table function is not really set to the perfect window, but do you see how the red just went over the blue just like that? That means they're the same exact line, okay? And we said it's going to intersect at 1, which it does, and negative 13, which isn't on my graph. But I could always check in my table to make sure that when x equals negative 13, y should be equal to 0. Yep, and we're good. See, it's going, it's kind of freaking out right now, but it was 0. And if you see the blue and the red, they're exactly the same. So now, looking at number 5, this is already in vertex form. You do not need to complete the square here. All you have to do is rewrite the equation and set it equal to 0 and solve it. So let's just get rid of that number here. We're not on a new number. Equals zero. Okay, go ahead and solve. All right, check your work with my work. It looks kind of funky because it split to the next line or next page. We should get x equals 11 and x equals negative 9. All right, the next section is quadratic formula. So what I want you to do is do these on your own. I want your answers in simplest radical form, okay? So I suggest you copy and paste the formulas to both problems. And so pause the video and then check your work when you're finished. All right, let's take a look. So the first one that I had to do, number six, that one should have been pretty simple because the square root of 81 was in there, which is a perfect square. 
So we should get negative 2 and 7 for our roots for that quadratic. For number 7, a little bit different, we had the square root of 432, which is kind of intimidating. Um, I left my calculator screen up to show you how I found the factor. Now, it actually wasn't that tricky because I saw 144 right away. And I knew that that's a really big number, and I tested some of the other ones that are up there as well. So I knew that that was the only one that was going to work. So I replaced that with... Um, replace the square root of 432 with 12 radical 3 down here, as you can see. Then I split my equation to simplify, so either one of these answers is correct. And that's it for this week. We have learned all methods for solving quadratics. Make sure if you have any questions to reach out to me, and make sure you self-assess for today.